Happy New Year again, sisters. I hope this video finds you in good spirit. I hope that uh, school is going smoothly. Um, every, every year, people around the world, they do New Year resolutions. Um, most people don't carry out this resolution throughout the year. They will probably do well in the first two months and then third month, fourth month, they'll probably give up. Now, I have been doing something different every year for the past... I don't know, maybe for the past seven years plus, I have not been doing New Year resolutions in a very long time. What I've been doing is first of the year. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, um, but I got to learn about, I got to know about uh, first of the year in the previous church that I attended. So how does first of the year work is that uh, what our pastor would do the first Sunday of the year, he will give us a verse. Now he will pray about it, you know, before the the service, and he had a uh, different section. So different sections of the church, whichever whichever section you were sitting in at, in the church, you would get a different verse from the person who was sitting in a different um, in a different column of the in a different column of the church. So that's how we had our verse of the year. And the verse of the year you would this would be your verse of the year. So whatever you would be going through throughout the year, you would always refer back to that verse. So it's been such a blessing to me and I think it works so much better than the the New Year resolution because you know like I said a New Year resolution you always don't carry out those resolutions throughout the year but the first of the year is so and especially when you pray before getting that verse it will speak to you. Um, let me give you an example. In 2016 I had Jeremiah 15 21 um, the reason why I remember is because I always write down in my Bible, like close to the verse, I will always write down, this is my verse of the year 2016, 2017, and so on. So in 2015, I had Jeremiah 15, 21, which says, I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you from the grip of the terrible. And let me tell you, sisters, this verse was my verse for 2016. I was delivered. I went through a lot of spiritual battles and I saw the hand of God in all of them. I saw that God delivered me from some bondages that I had, I had been into. He delivered me from so many things that I was struggling through, I was struggling with. He delivered me from so, it, it, it was my verse. So when I was going through difficult challenges in 2016, I will always go back to that verse and I will claim it. And that verse was my verse. So even in previous years, the verses that I got definitely spoke to me. Like if I felt um, discouraged, I'll go back to that verse. If I felt like, oh, okay, this is things are not going right. I go back to that verse and I claim it. And those verses have always, always spoken to me for that year. Now this year, because I did not, I, I, I don't have a church yet that I go to. Uh, this year, what I did is I went on BibleGateway.com. Uh, Bible Gateway, they have daily verses. Um, so they have verses of the day. And on January 1st, even before going to Bible Gateway, on January 1st, I just pray. I prayed and I just asked the Lord. I say, Father God, I, I'm going to go there. I don't have a church, you know, for this, you know, that usually will give me a verse of the year. But I'm going on Bible Gateway and I pray that the verse that I will find there will be my verse. And I will take it as my verse that this is from you. And I went there on January 1st and the verse that I got there... I took it and I say this is going to be my verse of the year. So I want to encourage you sisters to also, you know, just try it for this year. Instead of doing New Year resolution, why not do, you know, January is not over yet. So why not do a verse of the year? Um, you can go on Bible Gateway, uh, whichever day you want to go. You know, like, like I said, pray about it first and say, Father God, I'm going to go on this site, whatever verse they have for tomorrow or for the next day i'm going to take it as my verse of the year and today i want to share with you the verse that i got uh because it's not i think it's a verse that speaks to everyone i know it's my verse of the year but i want to share it with you because what is in that verse is really something that everyone should put to practice and it's very encouraging so 
Okay, the verse that I got for the year of 2018 is Micah chapter uh, 6, and we are in verse 8. Micah, ch Micah chapter 6, verse 8 says, He has shown you, O men, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So we're going to look at this verse today. And before I even jumping into that verse, I want to first give the context of, um, of the verse. Um, what the, the prophet is talking about here, he's talking about, and if you see the, the verse before that, he's talking about his offering. The prophet is saying, what, even if you see verse 6, it says, with what shall I come before the Lord and by myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? So the prophet is saying here, how should I offer my, what kind of offering should I give to God? What would please the Lord? And that is, is such an important question because today we feel like oh the only offering that God will accept or what God will be most pleased with is if I sing well on Sunday if I am part of the choir um, if I spend time you know working in ministries then that will be a good offering to God um, if I am a pastor because I'm preaching the Word of God on Sundays then God will be really really pleased with me and that is not it because the answer to the prophet's question is in verse 8 which says that he has shown you all oh men what is good so God has shown us what he wants from you the uh, the the the, the preaching, the serving, the ministries that we can get involved in is not our first offering before the Lord. But even if we go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it talks about offering ourselves as living sacrifices. That's the most acceptable, the most pleasing offering that we can give to God. It's not about what we can do for God, but what who we are what we who we are is what is most important because i can be a fornicator and then sunday morning i sing really really well that's not going to gladden the heart of god i can be a liar a, a a thief throughout the week and then on sunday i'm a preacher i'm a pastor that does not make god happy but what pleases the heart of God, it says here, what does the Lord require of you? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And we're going to see those three things. So one, what can we do to bless the Lord? It says, first of all, to do justly. In the New Living Translation, it says to do what is right. Now, first thing that God requires of us like I said, it's not about what we can do as a service, as a ministry. But God wants us, first of all, to do what is right, meaning to live a life that honors Him, to walk according to His commandment, to walk according to His laws. And Jesus Himself says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He doesn't say, if you love me, you will go around the world and preach the word of God. He doesn't say, if you love me, you will sing in the choir or you will be a minister or something. Because seriously, like I get so frustrated when people are saying, oh, I'm in two, three, four ministry. I serve God on Sundays. What do you do for God? And they feel like, oh, because I'm in so many ministries, it's impressing God. You can be in so many, like I said before, you can be in so many ministries at church, but if at the 
at the end of the day, you don't love God. You don't follow the commandments of God. You don't walk according to the word of God. All of this is nothing. And Jesus himself, like I said, he says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my command. And the commandments of God, the law of God, the word of God is what teaches us to do right. How can I know today what to do, uh, what is right? How can I know today how to do to do justly to act justly it's by reading the word of god it's by studying the word of god it's by putting into practice the word of god it's by submitting to the word of god because the real challenge is to submit to the word of god now many of us who are children of god you know how difficult at times it is to submit to the word of god you Sometimes you don't want to do what the Lord asks you to do. Sometimes you don't want to submit because you're tired. Like I was sharing with you last year how I was going through so much and I just, I was tired. I didn't want to, to wait patiently on the will of God. And like, I was like, I mean, that's what it, it is about. It's not about, I'm not, I'm not saying that service for God is is bad what i'm saying is it's not the primary thing to offer to god because anyone today can sing in the, the choir anyone today can be a pastor so many people today are becoming pastors left or right but what is most challenging is to submit to the word of god and when you learn to submit to the word of god when you learn to submit to the will of God, that's how we can act justly. That's how we can act in a righteous way. And that's the good offering, the pleasant aroma that we can give to the Lord. Now, the second thing that the Lord requires of us is to love mercy. Now, other translations have to love kindness. Um, but in my French Bible, there's an asterisk close to the word mercy. And I went to the, end of the, to the end of the Bible to see the glossary, and it says that this word mercy um, is close to the Hebrew word hesed, which means loyalty, it means solidarity. So I'm trying to just, you know, translate from French to English. And when it, it says that when it is, um, ref, when this word is used, in relations to God and his people or God and a man it means a deep communion and this main this makes sense right because what does God requires of us is to do right to love mercy okay but really this is the the true meaning of that word is it refers to a deep communion between God and man or God and his people it implies love it implies grace faithfulness goodness it implies offering uh, having a relationship or a fellowship that is based on truth and sincerity wow that means so much than just to love mercy and like i said I've, re I've read this verse so many times but i never knew that it meant more than just to love mercy so the first thing that god wants from us is to do what is right to submit to his word to walk according to his word the second thing is to have a deep communion with god and this makes so much sense for example if you go to john 17 3 uh, when Jesus is doing his last prayer, in John 17, 3, he says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, we usually think of eternal life as, oh, eternal life means I'm going to spend life forever and ever with God. But eternal life here, Jesus says, this is eternal life to know God as the only true God and to know Jesus Christ. Throughout the Bible, and even if you see the Bible, the, the way it's written, it's always been God seeking a relationship, a deep relationship with us. Why did God choose um, Abraham 
you know, it's not like Abraham wanted to have God. He didn't care about God. He didn't probably know about God. But why did God choose Abraham? And why did he want this lineage from Abraham to Isaac and Jacob and so on and so forth? It's because there was that covenant, that relationship that he wanted to have with him and with the future generations. Why did God send Jesus his son? He could have just left us all wandering or you know managing ourselves but it's because he wanted to bridge the gap and get us closer to him uh, why did god give us his holy spirit it's because he wanted us to have his presence in us so all throughout the bible you see that god really wants not a superficial relationship not a relationship where it's like oh god is a god of sundays and I can live my life throughout, you know, throughout the week. But it, he wants us to be one, to be together, to have that fellowship. It's not like we should be like the religions of the world where it's like, oh, if you do right, God will bless you. If you do wrong, God will curse you. If you bring offerings, God will be pleased with you. If you don't bring offerings, God will be not pleased with you. If you tithe, God will bless you. If you don't tithe, God will curse you. No, it's always been first and foremost. That's why you see Micah, the prophet is saying, okay, what can I bring to God? What can I offer to God? What can I do to please him? Should I bring animals? Should I sacrifice my, 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 my firstborn? What should I do? And God says, I don't want any of that. I just want you. And if you see in the New Testament, in the letters of um, even Jesus in his parables, and, and especially also, um, oh, what's his name? <laughs> the Apostle Paul they compare the kingdom of god with marriage with a wedding with a relationship between a man and a woman um a wife a husband like a proper relationship like the wife wouldn't in a proper marriage um the wife would not love her husband because he gives me diamond and he gave me you know all these gifts and the in a proper relationship, a husband should not love his wife because, you know, she gives me intimate relationship and she's very uh, good cook uh, when it comes, you know, when it comes to eating. But the, in a proper relationship, a husband should love his wife just because of who she is and vice versa. And what, and it, this is not any different with God. God is not after the fact that, oh, we serve in a thousand and one ministry. It's not there because, oh, we, I'm an usher at church or I'm a Sunday school teacher. That's why, you know, I'm, you know, I'm earning the favor of God. No, but God wants us, just us. To walk in deep communion with God means, what is it? Okay, what does it mean in, in an everyday life? It means that if I'm going through something, instead of calling my sister first, I will talk to God. When I'm waking up in the morning, instead of going on Facebook and trying to find out what people have written, posted, things like that, I would want to first have time with the Lord. Um, if I am at work and things are not getting, are not going right, in my heart I'm just praying to the Lord, I'm talking to the Lord. If I'm driving in my car or I'm in the bus and I have nothing to do, I just want to talk to the Lord. So it's spending those quality moment with God, really just getting to know him and getting to talk to him and getting to just be one and know him and just spend time in his presence. It's just, that's what it is to be in communion with him. And it's that unity that we need to, to really long for. Last but not least, uh, it is to walk humbly with your God. So uh, what the Lord requires of us is to walk humbly with God. Now in the previous, the past years, I've mentioned, I've talked about humility so many times, so many times. Um, one of the things that really challenged me about humility is that humility is everything. Uh, we all know the verse that says, I believe it's in James, where it says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Being humble is what will help us. 
in our Christian life in being a child of God because if we want God to be on our side humility is what we need humility doesn't mean that I have to go you know I have to walk with my head bow down I means I have to just you know sit quietly you know like some people would do and they think they're so humble humility doesn't mean that but Humility is, if you see what humility is, humility is about submitting to the Word of God. Because when we submit to the Word of God, it breaks our pride, our arrogance. Ladies, sisters, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Humility is about, it's actually all these verses. I mean, if you look at all this, um, not verses, but if you look at all these requirements, whether it be uh, to do what is right, to walk in communion with God or to walk humbly with your God. They're all intertwined, like they all mean the same thing but just in a different word. Because walking humbly is about submitting to the Word of God because when you submit to the Word of God, you put aside your desires, you put aside the flesh, you kill the flesh actually, and you decide to say yes to the Word of God despite what you may think or feel. One thing that people do not realize is that when we worry, it's a sign or it's a mark of arrogance or pride, right? We wouldn't normally not think about worrying as an act of pride. Actually, we feel like many people think that worrying, being sad is an act of humility because you know, I'm thinking about these things that is bothering. I'm thinking about something that is bothering me, and I'm just sad, and I'm just thinking about it. Let me um, explain why worry, sadness is an act of pride or arrogance. It's Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-five. That's why I say unto you, do not worry about your life. Um, Matthew chapter six, verse. 31. Do not worry by saying, what will we eat? Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Three times in the same passage, Jesus says, do not worry. Which means, when we worry, what does that mean? We are going against the word of God. And like I said, humility is about submitting to the Word of God. But when we worry, it means we're going against. Because the same Jesus who said, do not kill, is the same Jesus who says, do not worry. So if I worry today, it means I'm going against the Word of God. I'm going against the commandment of God. And if I'm going against the commandment of God, it means I am proud enough to think that God is not big enough to handle my problem, therefore I need to worry, I need to handle this problem myself. So when we say that we need to handle this problem ourselves, when we say we need to take care of this matter by worrying, by being sad, it means that we're proud. Even though it doesn't look like pride, but it is pride. And when we are proud, God resists us. It's that simple. So let's not scratch our heads and try to figure out, okay, what does, worry, what does humility mean? How can I be humble? Humility is simple. Humility is dying to self. Humility is putting the flesh aside. Humility means submitting to the Word of God. Because when you submit to the Word of God, it means that you're going against your flesh. It means we're putting aside all our best judgments all uh, what we think is right we're putting all that aside and we're saying father god i'm going to trust you even though i don't feel like doing this but because your word says so i will do it and this year because it's my verse of the year that's going to be my portion that's these are the verse these are the sentences i will go back to throughout the year Whatever will happen, I have to go back to it and say, okay, what are you doing, girl? What are you doing? Are you being, are you, uh, are you, are you being proud? God says you have to walk humbly. What are you doing? Are you 
living in communion with God or you're not living in deep communion with God? Are you just being, you know, with yourself or what are you doing? So this year is not going to be any different than last year or the year prior. Uh, I say that in terms that the devil will always seek ways to attack us. The devil will always seek ways to discourage us. The devil will always seek ways to bring us down. But if we have something to go back to, like an anchor, to build up ourselves it will definitely be a blessing and that's why verse of the year is important having something and and that, that's the reason even why it's important because it's the word of god you know it's not like you're saying to yourself okay i'm going okay i promise that this year i'm not going to do xyz you know these promises you know you may fulfill them you may not but when you have the word of god when we have the word of god this builds us up it is our um our reference point it's there to guide us and if you want to do this sisters i would say like i said pray about it before you know just you know pray about it and say father god this is i want to do the verse of the year i want to go to you know whichever site you want to go and retrieve a bible verse or whichever verse you know it may be even your bible study maybe you're doing a bible study and there's a verse that has been speaking to you and you may say okay this verse has been speaking to me and i want to take it as my verse of the year so that being said sisters i will take my leave and i pray that you will be blessed and continue to stay blessed take care of yourselves bye